uh, one of the key trends among European consumers is no sugar slash low sugar uh, trend. And here uh, I have a, a research from Intel that currently two out of five consumers in Europe would be happy to consume products with the uh, reduced sugar content. And also it's linked to the growing problem of the overweight. And according to the Polish, from the, uh, according to the data from the Polish National Health Fund, three out of five Poles are overweight. And in the same time, the financial potential of this market is also very significant. It's, it's, it's more than significant. It's, it is estimated that the global increase of, uh, in value, uh, uh, it will reach around 36 billion US dollars in coming years. How does Mars and Mars, uh, Mars products, Mars operation fit into those trends? First of all, I'd like to say I, I, I'm very proud of the category uh, I'm working in. So uh, our, there is a place in everyone's life for, uh, for a sweet moment, for a moment of treat, whether it's chocolate gum or, or ice cream. And of course, we are very aware of all the um, obesity health issues. And what Mars wants to be is to be part of the solution. Right. So, and I've already mentioned several things that we're doing. The first one, portion size, right? R uh, responsible consumption promotion. Uh, adult or uh, non-addressing uh, advertisement to kid, uh, kids is part of that solution. Reformulations of products and bringing new products with less sugar. So, Snickers protein, Twix protein, you may have seen in some markets, not yet in Poland, but uh, coming soon. We're also this year launching a product called uh, Balisto, which uh, the ingredients of which are oats and whole grain flour. So a completely different uh, product that we had in the past. So uh, that's, that's the direction that we are thinking and definitely working with the uh, research and development department uh, at Mars to see how even better we can reformulate. And always focused on the high quality ingredients. So um, already mentioned the 100% sustainable cocoa that we use in all our European chocolate production, which is also part of, uh, the, um, of what is important to consumer. So these are the, the directions we are going right now to be part of the solution. We touched the topic of ESG. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, all what is around production of cocoa. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't name one company which will say uh, they don't care about environment, sustainability, etc. How can a client uh, recognize if it's true or not? How can we as consumers check? How can you prove that? If you look at what the company is doing, it's probably you know uh, uh, the actions speak for themselves. We have committed and we continue to invest in the um, sustainable cocoa in the world. So we partner with big organizations like Care or Women in Cocoa to educate uh, all the steps in the supply chain. So very soon you will see communication on packaging as well. So 100% uh, sustainable cocoa in Milky Way. How to check is uh, follow the actions probably. Uh, the, as I said, this is the best example of what we do and everyone does versus what is being communicated. There's regular reporting, there's uh, annual reporting and reviews of the sustainable generation plan that we communicate broadly. And about clients, if you ask them, they of course do care, they, they declare they do care about environment, etc, etc. But <coughs> if they, sometimes, if they have to uh, spent uh, just a little bit more money on that, they, uh, it, it's not so clear. The decision is not so clear. Can you, uh, can you see that uh, in your activity and uh, how can you deal with that? You're absolutely right, right? When do I want to pay as a consumer incredibly more? Probably not. Everyone has a different situation. And my answer will be, you know, for manufacturer, it doesn't matter at the end of the day because all the things that we need to do to drive the sustainability agenda, we need to do them. 
there's no other solution, right? So we don't want to grow at any cost. So that's why we talk about quality growth, with responsible growth. So th I don't think there is any choice anymore. So uh, it's, it's important for the consumer, it's important for the planet, it's important for the future of our planet, future consumers. So uh, that's a cost that we need to, to bear, that, that's investment that we need to do, and, and that's it. And just to remind that entire, uh, to our viewers, that entire value chain of food production is responsible one third of the greenhouse gas emissions that we are not often mm, so, so aware of. And um, we are failing as a, as, a, as a people, as a human beings with uh, fight against climate uh, catastrophe. Last year was again the record years of greenhouse gas emissions uh, uh, emitted by the human activity. What is needed to, uh, you, you mentioned uh, already this, this uh, the, the, the how to address, how to be part of the solution, how you call it. So it's, what is needed is sort of effort concerted by the legislator, business and consumers uh, alike together in order to effectively fight the, the climate uh, catastrophe. And um, let's put the, let, let's set the uh, sort of working thesis that uh, large companies, companies who, who are able to be, uh, who are the market leaders, who are able to set the trends, who are able to uh, create the entire, uh, let's say, movements, create trends, should be the, in the front, uh, in the forefront of the of the changes. And such a company is is Mars Corporation, and. Now com coming back to the to the pledges you made, you already mentioned a little bit about that. So, in uh, published in 2022 Mars Net Zero by 2050 strategy, posits targets such, a, such, such as reduction of uh, the impact of prepared materials on deforestation to zero by 2025, and moving to 100% of the new renew renewable energy and net zero greenhouse gas emissions in its operation by 2040. A lot of quotation, on the other hand, I want to be precise with your, <laughs> with your pledges, mm -hmm. because we, as we said, we are, uh, we are uh, losing this battle. What you have already achieved, which uh, part of the, of the job you, you pledged to deliver uh, was easier to some extent to, 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 uh, to execute, which is more challenging than you have expected. Mm -hmm. I'm finishing, it was already long. Well, a very full question, but very, very important. And I think uh, to quote the commitment is, is important because uh, we stick to them and uh, we remember them. We managed to decrease the greenhouse gas emission by 6.1% versus the base of 2015 which we keeps us on track towards our commitment. We also have in some markets, so I think it's UK, Ireland and Canada, all our Mars bars are carbon neutral, all the production. So uh, Royal Canin, which is not a confectionery brand, but it's part of Mars family as well. They've, uh, they've made a tremendous um, progress in terms of uh, becoming carbon neutral and they have announced that they will become earlier versus what is planned. The other point on sustainable energy, so um, 100% of the electricity used in Janusowic and Poznan factory is from renewable sources here in Poland. So, and uh, more and more factories and plants of Mars are moving into this direction. The second part of your question was, yeah, what's the hardest? And, and we, I think we all know scope one, scope two, what's in your control, direct control, more or less. I, I, yes, it's, it's not easy, but you can control the progress of it. Scope 3 requires common uh, partnership, uh, working on it together with, with suppliers. That's why the way we, um, we work with uh, our supply chain and the cocoa supply chain, the mint um, supply chain and production and the palm oil is very important. So I've already mentioned the, uh, the programs that we have to support the farmers for more sustainable farming of cocoa. We have also made a good progress in terms of um, certified uh, palm oil tree. So uh, um, I think we moved from 1,500 mils to only 100. Yeah, so it's cutting them significantly, which is uh, decreasing the risk of deforestation. And uh, in mint, which is uh, our uh, gum main ingredient, let's say, or a pro popular flavor, so um, uh, the focus has been on um, 
sustainable water usage. So um, moving from flood irrigation to drip irrigation, we managed to cut by 30% the water usage. So uh, some facts which I found, first of all, very, uh, I'm very proud of that. Uh, and I found important to share, but uh, the journey is still going on. It's an everyday focus. So it's, it's an important, important investment financial, but also investment from the education standpoint and also from the, the incentive standpoint of people who are doing business. And uh, recently our new CEO, he mentioned in his interview, and it's absolutely true, that the top leaders of Mars their financial incentives is based on sustainability and uh, sustainable in generation targets. Mars arrived to Poland in early 90s, so you have huge experience already as an employer, as investor, as a neighbor. Uh, what's your opinion about uh, cooperation with Polish suppliers? Very positive. We have a lot of raw materials suppliers uh, for for our factory so oh, and then i will start with okay we have five factories in poland so uh, two for confectionery business so in uh, januszowik we produce uh, chocolate uh, in poznan we produce gum and mint so and uh, the the other factories are dedicated to pet food so for last year, we celebrated indeed 30 years of uh, one of our pet food, food factories, the year before 25 of Poznan gum factory. And all our factories, they don't, don't supply only Poland, they supply more than 60 countries. So that's why... Uh, what brands are manufactured in Poland? So uh, well, almost everything you see here. So uh, M&M's, Mars, Snickers, uh, all our gum, and mint brand, Orbit, Winterfresh, so um, Twix as well. It means that our partnership with local suppliers of flour, uh, sugar, um, dairy, so it's not only for Poland, it's supplying all Europe, European production. So a long-standing great partnership. So, uh,